programming has changed a lot over the years. Back in the day, when I was growing up, and it's funny, most of you have probably had parents who have given you the horror stories about what life was like when they were growing up and how they had to go uphill in the snow both ways in July to go to school. I come from a computer family. My dad was an electrical engineer at Motorola and he was programming before I was born in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And so when I was learning about programming, he laughed at me and he's like, yeah, you think you have it hard? I had to program using punch cards. Don't drop them because they would actually use punch card codes and it was very painstaking to do a lot of programming and every card would be a direction and if you dropped them they all looked the same and hopefully you numbered them so you could put them back into order so programming has gotten a lot simpler over the years one of my dad's favorite stories that he likes to tell me is about when he got his first floppy disk many of you have probably never even used a floppy disk and he said that he was working at Motorola and he got his floppy disk and he looked at it and said this is going to hold a lot of information and someday I might need another one. So back in the day when my dad started programming, he was taking, he would have to write things that were very efficient because there was no memory on the computers. They didn't have hard drives. They didn't work the way they did today. And the only important thing to know about that is that pro computer programs were not used the way they are now. They were done in a procedural manner because typically back in the 60s and 70s you would write a computer program that it would run all the way through processing data file after data file after data file till the data files were done and then it would spit out the result. So typically it would be programming something like payroll and you would have somebody input this is how many hours the person worked and you'd have a file saying this is the hours that they worked this week, this was the start day, this was the end day and this is how much they're paid per hour and it would calculate overtime. But once you started the program there was no interaction. It would run till it was done. And it would usually use a sentinel value, some sort of value that would tell the program that it's done. Now with a payroll type program, it could actually detect, the computer could detect the end of the file. It's out of data. So you would run until EOF, in many languages EOF would stand for end of file. Or you would simply type out end of file. When you got to the end of the file, the program would done, it would shut down and it would send some sort of report out to the screen or to the printer saying file processing finished. Something along those lines. Moving forward to the 1980s, back when I was learning programming. And I started learning programming, I typed in my first program when I was nine years old, because when I was nine years old in the early 80s, video games came in a book. And I typed in my first program onto an external tape drive, which could have played the Thriller cassette because it was really a cassette player, and Thriller was out about then and spent with my best friend two days typing in the program. We spent five minutes playing it, but I was hooked and I took programming classes from seventh grade on. And when I worked, we did a lot of menu-driven files and you would tell the program that you were done because it would be um, a menu option where you'd type in one, two, three, four, depending on the function you wanted to run. And if you typed in zero or 10, that would tell the computer, I'm done. It was a sentinel value telling the computer you were done. So if it got that number 10 from the menu, you were done working with it. Moving forward to today, we have a lot more friendly way to develop programs. We're typically using an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And this is even better than when I was learning to program because when I was learning to program, my IDE was in DOS and that's the old dead operating system, I mean disk operating system and it didn't have interactive things that would underline when you had a typo, change colors for keywords. Today's programming environments are very user friendly. They help you catch errors before you even compile the program to look for syntax errors and try to run it. They will underline misspelled words. They will change color for keywords which are reserved words for the programming language. So today if you're writing a program you're not using punch cards. You're probably not even using floppy disks for storage. You'll use an integrated development environment. You'll typically save it on your hard drive or your thumb drive or your external hard drive and then you can compile it to look for syntax errors and if it compiles perfectly then you can attempt to run it and check for logic errors. So we're going to focus on the logic in this class 
But the other lectures this week will show you how to use visual logic, which lets you do flowcharts that are actually in basically an IDE because you can run them. And it will ask input from you and it will give you output. And so that's what your homework will be for this week. So this week, look at the other um, lectures on how to use visual logic. You're going to be creating your own Matlab scan.